If you're over 40 trying to make videos, you may be thinking, dang, this is hard. Well, it can be, and you may be thinking there's gotta be a, an easier way just to create content with all the stress and all the other things that go along with it. Well, there is. There's actually 10 ways that I'm gonna share in this video. They're simple ways, they're practical ways that will save you more time so you might can even create more or maybe create with less stress. How about that? I like to think of these as kind of do it once and just reuse it as much as possible. Tip number one, keep a video idea list. I think this is so important as you're creating because if you sit down to create, unless you just, look, and you're one of these guys that can just like, I'm gonna vlog on the go and I'm not gonna worry about it, that, that's okay. But depending on what you teach or what you share or what you wanna do, it you may need something to jump start you. I use Apple Notes for almost all everything I do from scripting my notes here on Apple Notes. So I keep a video idea list. I, I think of something, I jot it down. Somebody mentions something in the comments, sometimes I'll do a screen grab and drop that in there. Sometimes I'm using the, the built-in voice memos feature, which by the way, I did a whole video on that. It's really cool. It just allows you to kind of talk out an idea, but I'm constantly grabbing ideas and so therefore, when I'm ready to shoot, I can go and just look at the ideas. Now, you can take it a step further. I know this works in Apple Notes, but you can pin ideas. So sometimes I'll pin some ideas, and these are the ones I'm going to do next. And then I'll jump in and I'll, I'll bullet point them out. I usually don't do scripts. I do bullet points. And then that's what I'll go off of. But maybe you just come up with a list of here's what I'm going to produce this week or this month or today or something like that. But I'm telling you, this is this is a great shortcut to keep an idea list and maybe put it in a in an order of this is going to be my first video, my next video, and then go from there. Second thing is reusable intros and outros. I don't know that you necessarily need an intro for your video. I see this question a lot. That really depends on you. I know there are some out there that say don't use intros. There's some that do. I do believe if you're going to do an intro, don't make it crazy long, but that's a different video. But let's say that you do a video podcast or a show or something like that, or you have a brand that you want to always make sure that people use that or that people know, well, create an intro and just reuse it all the time. So I wanna show you two examples. Now, I don't know that I ever use these, but I was kind of going through this period with my video podcast where I was going to do these interviews and I came up with this title called That Creative Journey. I still kind of like that. And so I created the, the first animation you're gonna see in totally in Final Cut. And then after a while, I thought, you know, just I've got the podcast called, you know, uh, Kevin's Talking About. So then I created the second one in Canva, very simple, but let me let me show you those. Now again, they were short, sweet, but had I had I decided to keep using those intros, let's just say the the that creative journey, then every time I got to a point where I was producing the show, I would just reuse that and play that intro and not have to redo it every time. The same thing can go for an outro. So let's say there's a there's a, a way you want to end your videos where you have an animation, where whether it's you're creating an end screen or you always want to have an animation that goes to your website or something like that. By creating these once, then you can just reuse them over and over and over again, and it will save you a ton of time. Now, you may have to create them up front, and that may take a little time, but I'm telling you, when you get into the production standpoint, even if you're just doing it yourself, which I recommend, whoo, gonna save you a lot of time. Number three, keyboard shortcuts. So you can do this for editing programs, and you can also do this for just like the keyboard. For example, I edit in Final Cut Pro, and there are a lot of shortcuts that I have to help me edit faster, trim faster, even things that help me do audio faster. And you can even go in and create your own shortcuts in there as well. So that helps in terms of editing, like even setting an in and an out point. But even just in the keyboard in general, now I'm on a Mac, but I use a Logitech keyboard. And so I have shortcuts in there. A lot of times I'm using, what is it, Command Z or Control Z, which is undo. <laughs> I use that quite a bit. I also use J, K, and L when I'm watching a video back. So like when this video is done before I upload it to YouTube, I'll preview it. I'll watch it back. And I usually do it at a faster speed. So if I hit the L key, the, the L, yeah, the L key on the keyboard, it'll speed the video up. J rewinds it and K pauses it. 
my space bar will also play and pause. So sometimes I'm doing that, I'm making a note, maybe it's for the, for the description of the video as well. So those are some things you can do. And again, being on a Mac, you can even create shortcuts for other programs as well. So like I'm recording this right now in Ecamm Live. And so I have shortcuts that triggers the animations. So for example, to hit the, to trigger the next animation, point four, I'm gonna hit four on my keyboard, which brings up the point four, which is go to music and sound effects. So if you use music and or sound effects in your videos, what I would recommend is have a folder of cuts that you wanna use over and over again. Now, you need to double check whatever music subscription you use. Like I use Upbeat. Every subscription has different uh, use policies, whether it's for YouTube or commercial or personal or whatever. Most of them, by the way, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just telling you that I've used a lot of them. Most of them, if you let the subscription expire, you can't keep using the music. You can't just like, you know, download it or things like that. But as long as you have a subscription, now I know with Upbeat, you can even create playlists. So you could create a playlist in Upbeat of let's just say you have five or six cuts of music you're gonna use for everything. And then you can go pull from that. Sound effects are the same way. I have a folder called sound effects. Actually, I, th I think I call it SFX, which is just the, the shortcut for that. On these graphics, you hear a typing sound effect. I have a typing sound effect in there. So when I'm editing this, I just pull that sound effect in and I'll drop it on there. And that way I don't have to look for it all the time. Shortcuts will save you a, a ton of time, especially if you have music and or sound effects that you want to reuse over and over and over again. Number five, B-roll library. If you don't know what B-roll is, right now you're looking at what's called A-roll, and this goes all the way back to the early days of editing. So B-roll is what you would cover it up with. So right now you're looking at a shot from another camera of me recording this, kind of kind of meta-like, huh? <laughs> but that's called B-roll. So B-roll is like extra footage, but it can also be a graphic, a photo, a text. I, I tend to think anything that is secondary to what you're saying, but but adds to it. You can do stock footage. So I used to do this. I used to subscribe to stock footage libraries, and there's a lot of good ones out there. And then I got realizing that if I'm talking about editing, I would rather just show me editing or me setting up my camera or something like that, rather than just go to a stock footage, which is going to be like the same shot you're probably going to see on so many people that subscribe to the same thing. So what I do, I keep a folder called B-roll. And then I've gone in and I think this is an important point. I label them. Now I, I can't say... <laughs> I've done this perfectly, but I tend to go in and if I have B-roll of my cameras or B-roll of the iPhone or something like that, let's say iPhone. So if I'm doing a video on an iPhone and I want just a shot of me on an iPhone, well, I've got several shots of that or my Osmo Pocket 3 or my journal notes or something like that. So anytime that I know of, oh, I might need a shot of that, I've already got those, and that saves me a ton of time. Now, did I have to shoot those in advance? Absolutely, but sometimes I'm even pulling them from other projects. So it will save you a ton of time. Six, project templates. There's so many different ways of doing this. I don't use Notion, but I know of people that, that keep project templates in Notion. I do kind of keep different folders in my, my Apple Notes, but one place I do it is I use Canva for my graphics. Canva, I'm on the, I'm on the paid plan. It's the pro plan, I believe. And they, you can have a, they, I think they call it brand kit. I just call it, you know, Kevin Colby brand kit. And so in there, I've pre-established the fonts I want to use. Like my main font is Arial. So whenever I'm adding text in Canva, it's automatically going to call that up. I have a bunch of colors in there, and then I have my logos as well. So what I can do is then, if I'm creating something, I've already got my text figured out. I do the same thing in Final Cut Pro. Whenever I'm adding text to screen, I already have that as my default. You can even take it a step further in editing. Again, I, I'm on Final Cut Pro, but I can have I can have uh, moves and different colors and whatever I whatever I want to do, I can save as a preset and automatically put that in there. But if there's something that you do over and over, colors, logo, things like that, that you can save time on, you can even do this in scripting. So like, for example, let's say that you want a template. Again, this is under project template, but you have a template. So you want to fill in how you're going to start your video, 
what your points are going to be and how you're going to end it. That can be your template. Then all you're doing is you're just filling that in, which again, helps you create faster. Number seven, thumbnail templates. Being completely honest here, I don't do a good job of this. Let me kind of explain this. So prior to me kind of shifting and refocusing to talking to people over 40, just kind of helping with video, my thumbnails were kind of a, a little hodgepodge of different things. And so right now, kind of, kind of my template is what I call hyper real. So I usually will grab a shot with my iPhone or as I'm rolling video, I may kind of pause for the camera, and then I'll use those for my template for my thumbnails. Now, template wise, I use the same fonts for the most part. I might change it up just a little. I use the same colors. And a lot of my thumbnails, I tend to try and put the font on the same side. It, again, sometimes it depends on what I'm using. What you could do is come up with several styles, three, four, five styles. There's nothing magical about that. Whether maybe you're on the right side, middle, left side, or whatever, and then you just reuse those. And what you can do is change out your expression. You can change out the title. You could even change out the colors. And then therefore, that will help you with that. Now, if if you want more help with that, I actually have done a course called YouTube Thumbnails Made Easy. I'll put a link to that down below and it walks you a lot through a lot more tips and things like that. You might want to check that out, but I'm telling you thumbnail templates can also help as well. Number eight, have a camera and mic ready set up. So like I do everything in my home studio office. It's a former bedroom. It's 11 by 13 space. I actually did a, a video on this. If you want to see that, I'll put a link to that down below. But like right now I'm recording at my desk. So I have this mic that's plugged into my computer. I have my camera that's set up ready to go. And right now I'm using Ecamm Live so I can hit record and be going. So I don't have to rethink the setup every time. Even my light is easy enough to turn on and off, or that would be off and on. You get, you get the point, right? This helps me create content faster. But let's say you shoot with your phone. Well, maybe you can have like a tripod mount. Maybe it's mounted to the desk or it's something that you set on a table. You pop your phone on, you turn your mic on, and you're ready to go. You can take this a step further depending on the programs you use or your, your mics. One of the things I love about this Shure mic, and I think it's the MV7 Plus, is I'm using the USB components, an XLR USB mic. I have it going through the software that comes free with it. It does auto gain and all of that. So I know that my video, my audio rather, will be almost perfect coming out of this, which is one less thing to do with. I'll take it a step further. If you have a camera, and you're, let's say you're so new to video, so this is kind of like a bonus point within a point, then use the auto settings on everything. I know that, that some people will disagree with this and that's fine, but the cameras have gotten so good that you could leave it on auto white balance, you could leave it on auto focus, which is what I use, and even somewhere in the audio as well, and it will just help you create. So don't hesitate to do that if it'll especially help you create faster just having something set up and go. Number nine, default settings. This is specifically powerful for YouTube. I don't know if you knew this or not, but in your settings, you can actually set your default uploads, which means like for mine, I already have something in there about my courses, my coaching, I think about my newsletter. I even have the affiliate disclaimer link, including the one I need for it for my Amazon links. So whenever I upload a video like this video, when I'm uploading it, those will automatically be there. Now, you can change them and you can add to it. So like, for example, I've mentioned other YouTube videos in this video that there'll be links to those down in the description. I'll add those, but instead of having to type everything out, it's only those things. Now, let's say you have different types of upload. So you have something more centric to like when you're on the go or maybe your cooking show or whatever. Well, then just keep those like in, again, I use Apple Notes and you can copy and paste those. What I would recommend is just copy and paste the parts that are different and then you're not redoing it over and over and over again. Number 10, batch record. All this really means, if you've heard this before, is when you're sitting down to record, you try and record as many things as possible. And as many things may be two for you. It may be three or four. I don't do a great job of this, and some of that is by choice. I think the furthest I've ever gotten ahead was five weeks. I literally once got five, because I usually do a video a week, sometimes more, 
but I think I did five weeks worth of videos. And what happened to me is I, I got bored during that month because it's like, oh, you know, I did do some other things, but it was like, oh man. So I, I usually don't do too many at once, but depending on, you know, if you've got a full-time job or this is part-time for you or just a hobby or you've got a busy family life or whatever it is, the more you can try and batch record, the more it will help. And you can use programs where it just you're recording to their cloud or you know an external drive, and then you just go and edit them when you can. And remember we talked about reusing things and B-roll. Well, you could even roll in things you've already shot before to help with that. So it's another way of saving time so you're creating more depending on how you're creating. Like I mentioned, I've been creating content for a long time. And so anything I can do to speed up the process to save time, even if it takes me more time in advance. Like for example, to do this video, I had to spend some extra time in pre-production, like on the animations you saw come up. So when I'm recording it, I'll save more time in the recording and even the edit. So I don't know which one of these you liked, all of them, some of them, I'd love to know. But as always, thank you so much for watching. And remember, keep creating.